Movies can be more than just movies. They can be experiences, taking you on a personal journey. They can be dreams, drawing out our innermost fears and feelings. They can be reflections of the past or predictions of the future. They can push us to look inside our hearts and the hearts of others. The artists behind a film can guide us into another world. Andrei Tarkovsky was a guide, a director and writer whose films completely stand apart from the rest. At the heart of his career, however, is a kind person who looked at the world in a unique way. In this series, Mosaics of Time, we will be reflecting on the life and films of Andrei Tarkovsky. I'll be doing my best to keep things spoiler free. Tarkovsky was born in 1931 in Ivanovo Oblast, Russia. His father was Arseny Tarkovsky, a world-renowned poet, and his mother was Maria Ivanova, who later appeared in Andrei's film Mirror. When Andrei was five, his father divorced his mother and left home. His emotional and artistic growth was much affected by this sudden heartbreak. His mother raised him and his sister on her own, having to move across the country to escape the events of World War II. Andre's mother had dreams for her children. She involved them in many different art forms. Andre was especially fond of poetry and literature. After graduating high school, Tarkovsky developed a new interest. Tarkovsky enrolled in the VGIK Moscow Film School to build on this new artistic passion. He made three student films. The first was an adaptation of Ernest Hemingway's short story, The Killers, screenwritten and directed by Tarkovsky. It follows two hitmen that hold up a local diner in order to kill one of the diner's regulars. Tarkovsky crafted this short film very tightly, shooting it in a way that keeps you on the edge of your seat. Even in his very first film, you can see his attention to detail in guiding each shot and getting emotionally potent performances out of the actors involved. His second and higher budget project was called There Will Be No Leave Today. It was a 45-minute war drama produced by the Russian government in 1959, depicting Russian soldiers saving a town from the threat of underground warheads left over from World War II. While Tarkovsky keeps the film's tone consistently tense, he never fails to highlight smaller, more human moments between the soldiers and citizens. Andre guided what could have been a forgettable propaganda piece into becoming a heartfelt drama that viewers of the time grew to love. His final and most well-known student film was titled The Steamroller and the Violin. It follows a young boy bullied by his peers for playing the violin, who finds comfort in the friendship of a man working a steamroller. Fascinated by the boy's talent for music, the man is inspired to step out of his mundane routine, while the boy is reinvigorated to continue training and not give up music. With its dreamlike, full-color depictions of post-war Moscow, this film was the first to truly show Tarkovsky's passion for visual poetry. His direction of each actor weaves a complex web of human feeling while telling the story of an unlikely friendship in a fresh, unconventional way. As with any early work of art, the steamroller and the violin taught Tarkovsky valuable lessons, helping to refine his artistic sensibilities moving forward. His film school training had ended. What would Andre's next project be? War films were popular choices among up-and-coming Soviet directors in the 40s through the early 60s. However, the central focus of mainstream war films was to romanticize the warfare of Soviet soldiers led by Stalin in World War II. When Tarkovsky was offered a feature film script to direct, he had a far different plan. While still following Soviet soldiers during World War II, Tarkovsky's first feature film, Ivan's Childhood, zeroes in on how the horrors of war can truly tear a person down to nothing. This person, or child, is named Ivan. 
the film begins with Ivan, or Ivan as pronounced in Russia, enjoying a peaceful setting with his mother. The tone quickly shifts as the setting turns nightmarish, and Ivan is jolted awake. He is now alone in an abandoned building. His family was evidently taken from him as a result of the war. Following Ivan, we are introduced to the barren, war-ravaged countryside, which has become an everyday sight for Ivan. We continue to follow him as he works with the local Soviet soldiers, itching to get back at the enemy in whatever way he can. The film is structured around three more dream sequences that connect the audience emotionally to the highs and lows of what Ivan is experiencing in his head during this tragic time. At only 29 years old, Tarkovsky's goal with Ivan's childhood was to see if he had it in himself to be a director. Being his first feature film, this was likely his most difficult project yet, but through his persistence in realizing his personal vision for the story, he was able to craft a final product that he was artistically satisfied with. Let's take a look at one unique storytelling choice made in this film. As Ivan awakes, we don't know where he is. The usual practice would be to cut to a wide shot following him waking up from his dream, an establishing shot to give the audience immediate context. Instead of this, the surrounding area is slowly revealed, each shot showing more and more of the location and situation that Ivan is in. This slow reveal of context is used multiple times throughout the film typically ending with a wide establishing shot rather than beginning with one. This helps the events of the film maintain a dreamlike and eerie feel, as if each scene is trying to hide things from us, like a parent sheltering their child from the realities of war raging around them. In a recent Oscars acceptance speech, director Bong Joon-ho quoted Martin Scorsese in reference to filmmaking, the most personal is the most creative. Tarkovsky truly advocated for the practice of delving deep into your own emotions when crafting a film or any work of art. Ivan's Childhood is not a film about Andrei Tarkovsky, but quietly woven into it are intimate stories about his own childhood. When I first watched this film, I noted the dream sequences in particular as being especially visceral and emotional, but I didn't really understand how Tarkovsky was able to achieve this. Later on, I learned that the texture of these scenes was drawn from the director's memory. He focused on sensory things such as the imagery of horses and apples, rain in the air, imaginary light sparkling at the bottom of a well, the joy of sprinting along a beach where water and sky meld into one. Ivan, played beautifully by Nikolai Berlyev, was brought to life through the true emotions of Andre a child whose life was greatly affected by the tension of World War II. While forging strong poetic connections within his film, Tarkovsky wanted to stay far away from becoming pretentious with his metaphors. He disliked the growing trend of writers and directors assigning one symbolic meaning to a shot, scene, or story. To combat this, Tarkovsky would often leave his films more open-ended and ambiguous than most. While many elements sprout directly from his own memories and emotions, Tarkovsky encouraged the viewer to assign their own personal meaning to his films. This kind of filmmaking, though, doesn't tend to be very popular. How was Ivan's childhood received by critics and audiences? As one of many achievements, it won the Golden Lion at the Venice Film Festival. Despite this, certain critics labeled the film as exactly what Tarkovsky didn't want it to be, shallow and pretentious. Tarkovsky himself agreed with some of these critiques. Regardless, the film garnered worldwide recognition and is now known as Tarkovsky's stunning debut film, a touching introduction to his career. All in all, it's a poetic portrait of a boy, a soldier, raging against the world for taking away his childhood. Having accomplished this, Andre had decided he could be a director. What is a mosaic? A work of art made out of pieces of something. 
Tarkovsky famously called cinema a mosaic of time. This is fitting as each shot is cut out of time and pieced together to create something new, a beautiful whole where each piece fits. After watching Tarkovsky's films, this phrase resonates deeper with me, into the depths of Tarkovsky's mind, into how he viewed life itself. What kind of mosaic would he create next? A four hour long 15th century epic? Maybe.